I'm Libby and I was here today at the Happy Conference with my colleague Esther. Both of us work at Christian Aid and we came to talk about how we have developed with our divisional leadership team a series of principles about how we want to be working. One of our challenges had been that a lot of the principles and who we wanted to be were implicit rather than explicit. And this was leading to conflict and disagreement and kind of circular arguments. So we went through a process where we developed a series of six principles uh, with our senior leadership team and then we took those principles out into our wider, wider organisation. And one of the ways in which we did this was by asking all of our project teams to take a look at the principles and take a look and say what would be different if we applied these into our into our day-to-day -day working environment. And then we ask them to feed back to our senior management team and also to feed back to the project teams. We have been encouraging our principals to become part of the lifeblood of our project teams um, and it is really helping us to change the way we're working. Um, in particular today we talked about how one of our principles around creative collaboration has caused us to our project teams to go from being uh, regions and nations focused and central focused to being a group working together on a problem. Uh, and one of the great things about being at Happy today has meant that we've been able to have this huge number of conversations with loads of other people uh, about different things that they're doing to empower their staff to uh, and capture a happy workplace. Um, so I feel that I've probably almost gained more from being here today than I've actually been able to give, but that, that process has been one that uh, I'm going to take with me and start using tomorrow. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Change. Informative, thought-provoking, inspiring, uh, it's fanatical, ish, ish with inspirational, intriguing, uh, inspiring. Actually, this year we, or last year, we celebrated our 70th anniversary because Christian oh, wow. Aid was set up in response to the refugee crisis in Eastern Europe following World War II. Um, very topical in the current circumstances in the world, um, and uh, as you can imagine, we're giving a lot of thought to that um, right now as an organisation. So, really, really pleased to be here this morning. As Henry said, um, Christian Aid probably not leading at the front of innovative IT, I think it's probably fair to say, um, uh, kind of would love to get under the skin of what's happening at organizations like WL Gore and some of the other companies that I'm meeting here today. But the challenge for us has been very much, how can we take some of our values in the way that we're talking about the world and how we understand the world and um, what drives us at our core as an organization um, and bring it back into our practice and our ways of working. What does that really mean for us? Because we're really good at talking stuff, but actually what does it mean in our ways of working internally and are we able to translate some of those things into practice? So that's very much what we're, we're looking at here. So Libby and I um, are a job share, which is um, another story altogether if you're interested, um, but we work um, together. Our role in the last couple of years has been very much about how can we take power away from a fairly concentrated command and control kind of central culture to one that's very much more like the Dutch nurse um, example that Henry was talking about at the beginning of, of how can we get decision making much closer to the point of impact, how can we learn much more about the reality on the ground and as an organisation that talks about itself as a partnership organisation that's there to look at the injustice in the world and challenge that and say actually there's a lot of people who care about the fact that the world is not fair and it shouldn't be like that and actually we need to work together, that's not a simple solution, there's no easy answers to that, we've got to work together. So what does that mean for how we work together. So um, following on from um, a talk that we did with Henry and the Institute of Fundraising a couple of weeks ago, we, um, well probably a couple of months ago now, um, we like you were looking through some of the principles and ideas that were coming out from the discussions and thinking hmm, what's useful for us right now right here that we can um, take into practice and um, in Henry's book he has this model the job ownership model which is that actually for people to be able to know what they need to do and get on and do their jobs they really need to know um, their targets so what they're there for um, and the principles under underlying it and it was great to hear John talking about in the 
early part that if your if your principles are not um, clear, make them clear. If they're not explicit, make them explicit and work them out. And that's exactly what we want to talk about um, this morning because that was what we recognised was that we had a bit of a challenge there. So um, we're going to try and do something because um, we're trying to get digitally accelerated in Christian Aid, um, which is to use the Slido if mm -hmm. it works to create a word cloud. <laughs> Just while we're setting up the technology, can I ask you to just think on your own momentarily um, of a principle in your company or your organisation? So one that you, um, it can be explicit, it can be implicit, but you need to summarise it in one word. The way Henry describes principles is a bit like it's not that appropriate for Amnesty International to spend hours and hours discussing whether the death penalty is a good thing. That is a principle. Amnesty doesn't believe in the death penalty. What's the equivalent of your kind of thing that's just breathing in your company? Okay, so now the Wi Fi is not working. <laughs> Put them in anyway, and we'll see if we can get it up in a moment. Okay. Yep. So go back to Slido on your phone if you're connected. If not, can I suggest that you think of your word and then you take it into your group and you see, share your word and see if you've got any matches. I'd be very interested to hear if there are any matches of principles. So obviously if you're in the same company, I'd hope maybe there's a match. Um, but are there any across your table? Um, I don't know, just Sting. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Um, I'm going to hand over to Libby. One of the things that we recognised as we were um, leaving the workshop was that actually Christian Aid, as you're probably not surprised here, is a very values-driven organisation and one with a lot of principles. But what we were finding was that some of our principles were, were crashing up against each other um, and we had to look a little bit about what that meant for us in terms of our decision-making. So, Libby. So, as, as, as Esther has already talked about, Christian Aid um, is about partnership. It kind of feels obvious that that's going to be one of our principles. But also as well, we are a charity, so we're also about raising money to make a difference in the world. So at the heart of good fundraising should be about relationships. And when this works well, it looks like this. So I'm not sure if you can read the handwriting. This is a... Um, this is from our Easter appeal this year, where we were asking people to donate, but not only to also donate, but to also send a message of hope. Um, the story we featured was a women's refuge house in Brazil, um, and we got hundreds and hundreds of responses back from our supporters, as well as donations. Um, and this one here is saying, thank you for allowing me to give money. May it be turned into smiles and love. And this is, in effect, a win-win for fundraising and for relationships. It is enabling people to connect to others. Um, I mean, this is great. Like, I, I showed this to everybody. Um, and it enables them to sort of feel part of, sort of part of what we're trying to achieve. And also, it gives, gives us, centrally, a great feeling that we're, we're achieving something. However, sometimes it doesn't also work. So, um, for those of you who have followed or uh, um, have, have all of you followed the news over last summer about all of the changes in charity regulation and fundraising? Yes, I'm getting a couple of nods. Okay, so there's been huge, there's been a lot of changes in the charity sector. We were also under investigation for um, over nine, nine months almost for the, by the Information Commission's office looking at um, how we did our telephone fundraising. And luckily we've been cleared, we've come out, we've come out on top, but what this is highlighting is that we have had a challenge internally between people who consider themselves to be professional fundraisers and it's all about the money and I must get the money in at all costs um, and those people who are, more, who are much more about building, um, about building a relationship. And often the two of them, even though we're a partnership organisation, are playing, are playing off each other. Um, and so we often end up finding ourselves going around and around in circles um, about which is better when actually we don't really want to be doing that. So I'll hand back over to you, sir. Thank you. So as I said, from Henry's model, we, we recognised that actually we were spending an awful lot of time re going round in circles on something that was pretty clear to us. We were, although we completely respect the need to um, 
value the skills and expertise of individuals who've come from other organizations who have, have, who have created excellent fundraising techniques but haven't necessarily valued the individual and the person at the heart of it. That is not what Christian Aid um, was about. And we really needed to have a conversation to, to bottom this out and make it really clear. So I just want to ask you um, to think back to your principle that you just put up on Slido or discussed in your groups and, ha and discuss on your tables whether you think that's a principle that's implicit or explicit in your company or organization. Normally Esther has a, a duck quacking noise on her phone that she uses, but we've just been in quite a lot of meetings together, so I was like, I cannot hear that duck quack anymore. So <laughs> as, a, as a big cyclist, I own quite a lot of cowbells, which tend to come in useful for this sort of thing. So, Thank you. Where's the, where's the throw around box, microphone in a box thing? Love it. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback, just some thoughts on explicit, implicit, does it matter? Um, what's your experience? Please do. Would be right over the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's had to be an intermediate step here. <laughs> go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so actually, we had a discussion about principle and value, and in what have you been saying so far, sounds a little bit more like value than principle. Um, but a value needs to go, so what we would call is a value goes through everything and is appropriate for everywhere. Um, so whether you're a sales or a... So, so being clear about that, whether it's a value and goes through everything or whether it's a principle that is applied depending on circumstance. So I put the word commitment because that's a principle for us, which is we, you will deliver your commitment, right? But that comes from the value you belief in the individual. So if you believe in the individual, then you can say it's okay for people to take their own commitment. So there needs to be a link. Um, that we found most important. That was our conversation. Anybody else? I hope not, because I don't want to throw this, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Save and do that. Um, just thinking back to the question, you know, is it explicit or implicit? Um, what I put down as our company, our, our principle in our company, I'd say it, it's an ex explicit because we all know what it is in the company. It's on our front page of our internet. And it's something, for example, if somebody was go going off to do a sales meeting, it's what we're going to pitch about us. And we want everybody else to know about it because we're proud of it and we're proud um, that we have this principle and we work to it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say is the difference between the explicit and the implicit. Is it something you know or is it something you're willing to go and tell and shout and share with the world? Thank you. One last comment from another table. <laughs> I'm getting, getting better. Um, I think hidden values or principles in an organisation are more damaging um, because actually um, they can sort of be, uh, quite often in my experience, they're, um, it's one of the first things that I sort of dig for in an organisation that aren't living the values and then when I find them I sort of wonder whose values they are. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, I think that if you're not living your values, then maybe they're not your values. So don't have them or get some more. <laughs> and, and thank you for the clarification on the difference between values and principles. I think for me, our principles emerge from our values. So our value is around partnership, but the principles that we want to work in a more collaborative way together that gets the best of different party so thank you for for drawing out the difference um, so it's rooted in partnership which is the value and love but actually the principle is we're going to wait work in a way that gets the best that's for mutual benefit because that's what partnership is is rooted in so just remembering what we were going to say next yes so how do we do it we recognize that actually and I it's a very interesting point um, there that my friend just said um, my new friend um, that in a values-driven organization like Christian Aid, and I don't know for those of you who are working in 
uh, potentially in some of the more kind of social enterprisey side that what attracts people often is a strong sense of their own values and their own sense of what's important um, which is actually often why they started doing something in the first place um, and unless you open up that conversation lots of assumptions start to drive some of the decisions and people get quite territorial and there wasn't a kind of opportunity we hadn't really people were assuming that there were things that were principles for us and we hadn't really drawn them out so we had an opportunity shortly after the um, happy manifesto workshop with the Institute of fundraising um, to look at what might be ways that we could really draw out some of the implicit um, ideas that were floating around and really try and start to craft them together and create the conversation recognizing that there's value just to talking it through and learning from each other and understanding where people are coming from but also that we wanted to shape something that we could hold ourselves accountable to to say yeah this is the kind of principles that we want to be operating to so we did a number of kind of um, exercises where we drew people together we um, did a kind of principles bingo not we didn't have slider at that time I've only just learned about it um, but what we did have was just the opportunity to kind of write them down individually they were only allowed to go up onto the board as one of our potential principles for our project teams um, if you could find at least one other person in the room who had exactly the same one as you or and, and they it ended up being a kind of certain amount of toing and froing on how that worked we then looked at uh, we did some kind of assimilation of that brought them all together then we took them against some of our project work that we were doing and said what would it mean to put these into practice do they work for us are they actually helpful or are they just aspirational in which case they're probably more like a value or are they actually really helping drive us to do this in a better way so we really um, uh, worked together to try and come up with something that we could concretely take forward to our teams and share with them that actually um, what you think have been a, to, to try and unpack some of the assumptions really so in practice back to me so um, this great fact that Esther may have heard from someone sitting over here last week was that apparently so we we remember 50% of the things that we say and only 25 to 30% of, of, of what is said um, which obviously gives me great faith standing up talking to you but hopefully because we're getting you to talk to each other you're going to remember more so for us it was very much that the conversation it's the conversation that matters it's been talked a little bit about how oh well obviously it's, it's just common sense but actually often common sense doesn't translate into common practice so how do we get common sense, which are kind of our implicit principles, to then become common practice? So uh, focusing on one of our principles, this is one of the principles that we, that we developed, um, talking about collaboration. Now, of course, we're a partnership organisation. Of course, we work in collaboration with each other. But as we talked about at the beginning, there were often examples where we didn't, weren't necessarily collaborating and kind of understanding where everyone else was coming from. So what we did um, is we've, we've wordsmithed this a bit, but actually we asked all of, as Esther mentioned, we asked all of our project team, two of our key project teams, um, those teams working on Christian Aid Week, so which is our big kind of fundraising moments, I'm getting a couple of people who recognise that, but, um, but also Christmas, you all know what Christmas is. So we do some fundraising appeals around Christmas as well. And we asked them to go away and ask the question of themselves and their project group. So that was including leaders from our sort of divisional leadership team, but also people who were kind of doing some of the work. And we asked them the question, what will look different if you were to apply this? Or what could be different? And sort of challenging yourselves about, right, if we actually really put this into practice, what things are we going to change? And then in terms of talking about accountability, we asked them to come back to our senior management team and talk to us. Right, what things came out of that conversation? What things emerged for you? What things um, are, you, are you going to do differently? And as well as this, we also started to talk through, um, so the director of our department was talking about our key principles to our all staff meetings. And we've also started to work to the assumption, or well, we're asking all project managers to take these principles and even if the project's been in existence, for a long time, or if it's starting starting this week, that they need to go through and work through, we've got six of them, I think, work through what does this actually mean? What could be different if we applied this principle? Um, and so, our final question for you is, in thinking about principles, sorry, I'm getting a few, confu getting a few confused, so what, what have you said, what have you discussed amongst your tables, and thinking about principles, how might principles and 
building them into what you do, how might that, that work for you? What have you taken away from either what we've said, although you've only heard 30% of it, um, potentially what you've said to someone else on your table. Um, so I'm just going to encourage you to move back to your tables now, just to have that discussion, and then we'll ring the cowbell at you before we go into the next, uh, the next session. So, what are you going to take away? How might this work for you? Discuss. Um, if, you're ever, if you're ever running a, uh, a, a half marathon and you want someone to see you, give them one of these because it's the only noise that stands out through crowds. It's amazing. Um, so hopefully you are now going to take something away from that. Um, I thought I would just share with you two examples of how we've actually put the principle of collaboration into practice. So um, as we said, this is, this is quite new for us. Uh, we've been doing a lot of changes uh, in terms of how we work across our department. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about all of that over lunch. Um, but one of the things that we've done is that our Christian, Christian Aid Week uh, has, had a, has a central team. We have people with Christian Aid Week Project Manager as their title, um, and they produce products and they know what they're, I suppose, and they know what they're doing. Um, and then we'd also have a regions and nations group that ha would used to feed in and kind of give comment onto what that group was doing. Following this conversation, what we've done is essentially we've, we have merged those two groups. We have, rather than having two separate groups that kind of have a little bit, potentially, well, I think you're right, no, I'm right, no, you're right. And actually we've moved them into one and it's starting to work really well because people are really committed to actually working and, and showing that they're working in collaboration. Um, it's wonderful what asking people to present back to the SMT can do sometimes. Um, and also as well, another product that's uh, where this has come into, I suppose we've come into play, is around our committed giving. Um, the complaints that we had, which I showed you, that went to the that caused us to be under investigation by the ICO, were around our telephone fundraising and that kind of upgrade phone call that you will probably, if you support a charity, are potentially used to. Um, and one of the things that we've now done with our, what we're going to be looking at in terms of increasing our committed giving and what the offering is, is again, we have created a work group that is representative of the whole department as opposed to just the professional fundraisers. Um, and that's going to include people from our regions and nation staff, those people who, for whom that kind of relationship building is a key part of what, what, what's right here in front of them. So I can't tell you yet whether or not that is effective. It feels loads, loads better. We are getting people saying, oh, that's really good. We've had some really good conversations. Um, I had someone literally come out of a meeting in our basement room the other day from, I think it was actually our Christmas project group where we've done the same thing, going, that was the best meeting I've ever had. And if you've ever been in a basement on Lower Marsh, which used to be a marsh, you know, like, that's a pretty big achievement. So we are making small steps. Hopefully you guys will all, you know, hopefully you can take something away from, um, take something away from that. Um, I just wanted to reflect back to you, the two key words that came out from, these, from Slido were trust and respect. My encouragement back to you would be, what does trust actually look like? What would be different if we trusted each other more in this project or in this conversation or in this piece of work? Um, what does respect look like? What actually will be different if we are respecting each other? So um, we have a final slide, which is... Uh, um, as you can probably tell, we're reasonably, uh, we like to talk to each other and we also like to talk to everyone else. Um, so do get in touch. Um, there are our contact details and we will be here for the rest of the day. If anyone wants to use my cowbell in their talk, they're more than welcome to. <laughs>